Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. What I'd like you to do just for the next couple of seconds is just to watch and listen. Okay, um, hopefully you've not heard anything and the only thing you've seen is me stood here talking to the camera. Um, when I first took up photography, and especially wildlife photography, it didn't take me long to realise that the amount of time that I was putting in was often disturbed by the likes of dog walkers, cyclists, joggers and the general public out in the countryside. Now, all of those groups of people are as entitled to, the, to be in the, the countryside as much as I am as a wildlife photographer. But from a wildlife photography point of view, um, lots of hours wasted uh, and lots of great chances spoilt by the likes of, especially things like dogs. So, what I want to do in, in this video is explain to you how I went about getting permission to photograph and film on private land. And this is a piece of, of land that I've got permission to, to photograph and film on. So, what we'll do is we will look at the types of different landowners that there are. I'll explain to you how I went about getting permission from those landowners. I'll give you some do's and don'ts and then I'll also share with you some top tips to help you get a landowner's permission. The approach that I'm taking in this video can, can apply uh, all across the world I would, I would, I would, I would believe. Um, however, um, what I want to do before I get into the, the, the main part of the subject of the video is just to explain to you what the law is here in England with regards to access onto private land. Um, so the law on trespass in England, uh, trespass means that it is uh, entering land that belongs to someone else without their permission. So in other words, if you want to enter private land here in England, you have to have the landowner's permission to do so. It's different in Scotland. In Scotland, they have more uh, freedom of rights to access open country. Um, so it's slightly different in Scotland than it is in England. But the approach, as I said, should cover anywhere in the world. Okay, when it comes to getting uh, permission from landowners, I would uh, group landowners into three separate um, parties. And, and these are the, the types of landowners that um, I have uh, approached. You, you've got your landowners, people who own the land. I would group farmers separately because they offer great opportunities. And then there are organisations. And what I'll do is I'll cover how I approach all three parties to get the permission and I'll give you examples of how I've done it and um, what I did when I, I actually got onto the land and photographed and filmed it. Okay, first one we're going to look at is landowners. Um, landowners can be uh, an individual who owns a property with adjacent land. Um, I've approached um, two, three separate landowners. Um, one which has got lots of open countryside and, and, and woodland and I've been able to actually do uh, a number of videos on that land um, which are a part of my, my channel Kevin Hartley Photography. Uh, I did one on jays, I did one on Great Spotted Woodpecker, Little Owl, Nuthatch, um, all available on the playlist which I'll leave at the end. What we have here is a, a weir, a water weir, um, which is attached to um, a piece of private property. I'm actually filming on public land onto the private property, but in this case, I was photographing grey wagtails on, on this small weir when I was approached by a, a lady with a dog, and it happened to be uh, the landowner uh, who asked me what I was doing. I explained to them that I was photographing the grey wagtails on the weir. Um, I then found out that the, the, the lady actually owned the property and the small lake that's behind it. Now during that conversation I just asked her the question would you kindly give me permission to come onto your land and photograph around your lake and, and photograph the wildlife and nature? And she said yes, as long as I stuck to the, 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 the paths and the routes and that's exactly what I do. So 
face to face approach and just ask the question. The ideal habitat for a grey wagtail is what's exactly in front of you and this is the position I've set myself up on. This is a fast flowing shallow stream um, which runs alongside an old mill. The wagtails are attracted to the, the, the weir that you can see in front and I've set myself up just down to the right hand side. Absolute ideal environment for grey wagtails. Farmers, farmers offer uh, a great opportunity and they're a lot more friendly than, than, than people think. Um, I approached a, a local farmer, uh, I noticed that there was a healthy population of hares uh, on their fields. So uh, again, I made the approach uh, and asked them if I could have their permission to, to, to go onto the land. Uh, as long as I kept to the edges of the fields, hedgerows, and I wasn't disturbing their crops, um, could I pho photograph the hares and the permission was given and I, I've done a video on how to photograph hares again available on Kevin Hartley Photography. Okay, one other um, types of landowner you can look at is uh, organisations and, and what I did was I looked at uh, some organisations in my local area and I identified a, a local private uh, fishing lake. Um, checked them out, we've got a website, checked everything about the website, got a contact name, got a contact number and in this case I phoned the gentleman who was in charge of it, spoke to him, explained to him what I, I would like to do and arranged to have a meeting with them. Turned up for the meeting, and then we had a good walk around the lakes, uh, a good chat together, uh, and I explained to him again uh, what I'd like to do, uh, and he gave me permission to come onto the lake at any time and photograph the wildlife and nature. And in this location, I've made two videos, one on the Great Crested Grebe, and the other uh, on how to set up a bird feeder station in a wood, uh, adjacent to the lake itself. Next stage is head shaking and that begins when both the, the grebes meet each other. Uh, they stand proudly uh, in the water. They'll, they'll face each other and then they'll shake their heads and bills and they'll bob their heads up and down. Okay, P permission. How, we, how, how do you go about actually getting permission to, to uh, get onto somebody's land? Uh, there's a number of different approaches. Um, first one is the personal approach, um, where, which is face to face. So you arrange to go and meet the person, uh, you meet them face to face and you ask the questions. Um, how do you do that? Well, go and knock on the door um, or approach them if you see them uh, out and about. Um, failing that, um, next thing you could probably do is, uh, if you could find a phone number or an email, is if you can't meet them face to face, make a phone call, send an email, just explaining who you are, what you'd like to do, uh, and, and try and arrange a meeting. And another idea is um, if you've got a little business card. Uh, I had some little business cards made up, um, which, which I use. Okay, so once you've made contact um, and you've arranged a meeting, what are you going to say? Um, as I did with the um, fishing lake, um, I looked up their, their website, found about as much information as I could possibly about them, so that when I went to the meeting, I, would, I had all the information that I needed. Um, for that meeting. A couple of really simple things to do. Make sure you're, you're on time. It's, it's courteous, it's just good manners. Um, look professional. I mean, I wouldn't turn up for a face-to-face -face meeting dressed like I am now. I'm actually out today, um, well, making this video, but I'm gonna go have a walk about with my camera as well. Um, so just look professional. 
don't wear a suit and tie, but you know, just kind of look the part. Um, if you've got some images that you can show them, maybe on your phone, or if you've got a little folder, a little portfolio of photographs that you can share with them, just to show them the, the type of photographs that you're after and, and how good they are. Um, if you've got your own social media, I, for instance, Kevin Hartley Photography, I always mention that, you know, I've got my own YouTube channel, Kevin Hartley Photography, and I, I like to make videos. Uh, and that's always a good uh, talking point. The other thing you need to think about is exclusivity. Uh, are there any other photographers got permission on that land? And the one thing I would say is that um, on this particular piece of land that I'm on at the moment, I'm the only one that, that, that has permission to be here to, to photograph a film. Um, so you need to ask that question also. Tip number three is the personal approach. Meeting face to face with the landowner um, is going to give you a lot more credibility. Arrange to have a meeting, go and meet them as I said face to face and you know look the part, look, 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 look professional and, and if you've got images that, that you can share with them, take them with you. So tip number three is the personal approach face to face. Okay what I want to do is just to take a little time out from this um, particular uh, video and give you a look forward to um, one of my next videos in my wildlife photography series and that's to do with understanding light. When I took up wildlife photography um, I'm not the most technical guy in the world <laughs> and I'm not, the, I'm not the brainiest guy in the world either and um, trying to understand light in regards to photography is quite a complex and complicated subject. So what I want to do is share with you a video that I'm going to put together which covers the basics of understanding light from a wildlife photographer's point of view. So let's look forward to that video. Next we're going to look at um, some do's and don'ts. Um, go through some do's first. Make sure once you've, you've made contact with the landowner that you maintain communication with them. Keep them in the picture at all times. Um, be courteous. Uh, manners doesn't cost anything. If you find any damage on the land uh, or you think it's damaged, um, take a photograph of it. Uh, email it to them or, or phone them, um, but report any damage. Uh, share information with the landowner. For instance, on this land that, that, that I'm here, um, only this year we've had red kites um, coming across the, 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 the land. They're in the area. Uh, and in a conversation I had with the landowner, um, they mentioned it to me and I mentioned it to them that I'd seen them. So, you know, if you've got information, share it with the landowner. Be very careful about sharing information that you have from private land with people outside of um, the land itself. I nearly got my fingers burnt once um, sharing information with somebody who then used my name in vain and uh, I nearly lost permission to, to, to go onto the land so be very careful about that one. Some don'ts, don't arrive unannounced, just turn up unannounced. Um, don't cross any boundaries. Uh, again, on this land, it's surrounded by other properties. Um, don't go crossing boundaries. Don't damage anything. Uh, if you accidentally do damage something, then make sure that you report it to the landowner. Um, finally, don't post any intrusive images. And what I mean by intrusive images is images of landmarks that would identify the land. So things like buildings, vehicles, etc. So some do's and don'ts. Okay, communication. M mentioned how important it was that once you've got permission to go onto the land, that communication is very important. Um, so you need to set up and agree a line of communications. And what I've done on here with, with the landowner is we've got a little WhatsApp group. Um, so that every time I come on, when I, when I came onto the land this morning, the first thing I did was went into the WhatsApp group and shared my live location. And for the whole time that I'm here, um, the land landowner knows exactly where I am on the land via um, the WhatsApp group. Um, what you also need to do with regards to communication is you need to be aware of anything that's going on around the land that you're on. So are there any events happening? Um, try and find out any dates and times that um, you, you shouldn't be there. Maybe there are, for instance, on this, this land here, uh, they do a lot of horse riding. Um, so I need to know when and where they are so that I'm not getting in their way. Farmers, um, Think about the, the time of the year and the seasons of the year, things like harvest and, and, and times like that. That can often be um, a great time 
to actually photograph wildlife once once the harvest is complete. And uh, you know, if they're going to be crop spraying, you don't need to be there. Um, so you need to understand what's going on in and around the land that you're on. If you've got a hide or you've got a camera trap that you want to put up, make sure that you share that location with the landowner. Uh, they don't want to be turning up to find find a, a makeshift hide on the land uh, that, that they don't know who's put it there. Uh, and they also don't want to be finding camera traps. So again, speak to the landowner, ask for the permission to, to set up a, a camera trap. And what I do is I use the what three words and again, I will send a message on the WhatsApp group to the landowner saying, I've put a camera trap in, this is where it is, this is the day it's in, and this is the day it'll be coming out. And then when I take the camera trap out, I let them know that the camera trap is down. I've got this, my own pop-up hide, um, which I'll use on um, stretches of water. Um, but you need to be careful and make sure you've got the landowner's permission to go on the land and, and put a hide up. One thing to really understand uh, about going on to somebody's land is the, the countryside. Excuse me, is the countryside code. Uh, it's a code that they have here in the UK, uh, which is all about respecting, protecting, and enjoying the countryside. And there are some basic rules uh, in that code that you need to follow uh, when you're on somebody's land. So things like leave gates as you find them. If, if there's an open gate uh, that the farmer's left open, then leave it open. Um, don't go shutting it, you'll only piss them off. Um, don't leave any traces of where you've been. Tidy and clean up after yourself. Again, that's only good manners. Don't go leave rubbish lying around uh, or evidence that you... you, you don't go breaking uh, branches, uh, disturbing trees, etc. Uh, respect the livestock that's on the land. Um, it belongs to the, the landowner. And, and again, on this, this land that I'm on at the moment, um, it's, a, it's a working business uh, and that's their priority and you need to remember that. Uh, and stick to things like agreed tracks and routes and follow any signs that, that are posted. So tip number two, quite simply, is follow the country code uh, and respect, protect and enjoy the surroundings and the wildlife that you encounter. Uh, and respect the landowner. Meetings. If you are out and about on the land and you, you bump into the landowner, I said, say hello to them. Don't be shy. Find out what's happening. And again, as I said, share information with them and try and find out about any future planned events. So, say hello. And tip number one, can't overemphasize it enough. It's all about communication. Make sure that you're talking to the, the landowner, that they know where you are, what you're doing or what your intent is, and share any new information with them. So tip number one for getting the landowner's permission is all about communication. Okay, what I want to do now is just leave you with some pictures that I've taken uh, of birds uh, on land where I've had permission to do so. Okay, thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to uh, go about getting a landowner's permission to film and photograph on their property. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. All I would ask is that if, if you've liked it, could you hit the like button? Could I also ask you to consider subscribing to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, doesn't cost anything and it just helps me and gives me that incentive to keep coming out here into the English countryside and share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. Also, if, if you have any comments, please leave uh, a comment below. Uh, I read them all and uh, if you're asking me a question, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, until the next time, stay safe, take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.